Alright, welcome back to Tomb Raider. It looks like we've got a fight on our hands ahead. Roth, I'm coming! Thank God you're alive! Oh, God's got nothing to do with it. It's good to see you two go. Sorry, they did a real number on your leg. Oh, no, it looks worse than it is. Have you heard from any of the others? Nothing. Wait, what are you doing? The wolves took my food pack. The transmitter from the lifeboat's in it. If we don't get that back, we're not getting off this bloody island. Yeah, you need you need bandages, morphine, antiseptic. And also in the pack. Shit. Exactly. Come here. Come on. Oh. Oh no. No, 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 no. <gasps> Oh, don't do this to me, you northern bastard. Up there somewhere. Yeah, might as well just harvest some wolf carcass. Um, so yes, this section introduces a couple little things. What is this? I believe this actually leads up to an area we don't have to go to yet. Or not. I don't recall... Oh wait, this is the way I came in. Well... I look smart now. I hadn't noticed this before, interestingly enough. Um, but yes, we have to go to the wolf pack area. And uh, it's a quick hop, skip, and a jump out of here, really. Uh, but there's a few things in this area to collect, salvage and the like. Also, another collectible type in this area. The thing you set fire to. Let's go grab that every time. The game has an Assassin's Creed style uh, jumping and grabbing mechanic. So you'll end up grabbing stuff that maybe you didn't mean to grab all the time. But we're going to make this a little bit more trivial than not and uh, just work our way out of here pretty quickly if we can. Of course that's the one time I can't jump and grab something. Oh and uh, this is what I like to call the physics roof. Yep, you just kind of fall into that thing and bounce around all bunch. Uh, don't know why that's like that, but it is. Now, the easiest way to get through here is to just get up here as high as you can, as fast as you can, and make a jump. So, in the interest of time, here we are. Now, you'll see all the ropes uh, tied around stuff. These ruins. And this door here, uh, Was all this part of your we will be getting to those later on, but uh, needless to say, they have an important gameplay mechanic to them. And, if you look, this is another downed plane of some nature. Uh, it looks like it was a prop at some point instead of a jet engine, which it might look like. Uh, anyways. There's a couple things up in this area that we can check out. Uh, the first is this wall. It doesn't show anything yet, but it comes into play later on and will be important throughout the game. Next is 
over here. This is where the wolf den is. And here I'm going off, but if you come over here, you'll see this area. Let's go grab this GPS cache. And... Some kind of coordinates. Did someone... A wall I can't climb yet. So... We'll have to come back when we have the equipment that allows us to climb that wall. Until then, we'll suffer through some screen effects and get over to the wolf den. Right. This is sort of your... Just want the pack. This is sort of your average jump scare area. There's only one, though. Got it. Okay. Got to get this back to Roth. It's a quick time event jump scare. So, just stab him maybe a couple dozen times now. It's like a prison fight, basically. Uh, and we're done. And I can't strip it for salvage. There it goes. Perfect. Great. I like to get my XP and salvage out of animals. And with that, we're kind of done with that little section there. And a convenient zip line. That one I actually let go of on my own. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no fire. Can't get salvage. Oh well. Um, let's show off. Uh, this structure has some internal logic to it, and then it has some illogic as well. Just hop down here. Yeah, you can see the game really clings to a lot of the objects you can mess with. So that means you start balancing on stuff that you don't mean to balance on and all that. There's actually a few different things in this area that I haven't shown off right yet. Uh, the GPS cache and then a couple of uh, journals in the area as well. But we will get to those, like I've said, in collectathon videos. That was weird. Right now, Roth needs our help. So let's go talk to him. Right. Let's get you patched up. lady like you learn to do a thing like that? <laughs> Late shift at the Nine Bells. <laughs> Wolf's got nothing on a broken bottle. Hey, you got it. Nice work. So I assume the plan is to take that up to the radio tower. Well, it should give us the best shot of broadcasting a strong signal in every direction. Send out that SOS. And I'm not climbing anytime soon. Yeah, I was afraid you were going to say that. You can do it, Laura. After all, you're a croft. I don't think I'm that kind of croft. Sure you are. You just don't know it yet.
Well, that's happened my fast learner then. Just be careful, Laura. I want to give that axe a go on the rock wall over there first. Yep, we sure will. Uh, actually, it's the best and only good way up there again. It's a much quicker path. <laughs> so, this is pretty basic. Hit X to latch onto a wall. I'm actually jumping a bunch as well to speed up the process because this rock climbing stuff is some of the slowest and most boring parts of this game. Let's crack open some salvage here. And... Now that we've done that, and we don't really have a good path over there normally, let's just hop up here. Oh hey, salvage. I almost completely forgot about that. And I thought I was going to fall to my death there. So, we get back on our wall here. And maybe not. That was weird. Sometimes the game doesn't want you to latch onto a rock wall if you approach it from the wrong angle. Okay, here's another thing about rock walls. You'll have to do that. It's not really that bad or difficult. And a secret tomb is nearby. Great. So this tomb was where I was originally going to end the level. When I was in editing, it looked like it was a better spot to actually just continue on and finish up this section. So that's what we're doing. But for the most part, these tombs are going to be uh, their own little videos. I don't want to make people watch me struggle through some of the later ones. Luckily for everyone involved, this tomb is not too bad, and it doesn't take me too long to really go through it. Later tombs will be worse. These tombs have their own little, uh, cave walkway loading screens, let's say. Not really anything too bad or egregious. But it does take a while to walk through them. Laura goes slowly, and, uh, overall it just feels like a hidden loading screen, if you will. It does give you a chance to look at the wonderful fire effects this game has, though. And a camp. We won't be using that camp till we get through here, even though I have a skill point right now. Completing this cave will give me another skill point. Hmm. Gilded figures. Servants of the Sun Queen. Right. So, these caves are basically our puzzle areas of the game. Um... This one is pretty basic, it reminds us of things we've already done, and for the most part, that's exactly what this game is going to do with these uh, cave sections. It will remind you of mechanics you've already learned, or just learned. So, we have these four body or three bodies there. We have this cage that we can knock over, and that raises that up. We have to get up there, as you can see, and... Our best option for that is to climb this thing and then jump onto that rock wall. Hmm, unfortunately, the weight is a little bit too much. So, what we actually have to do here is keep that at our height and jump. I didn't see that rock wall because I wasn't using Survival Instinct the first time I played this game, and uh, that meant that I basically struggled through here. I tried to. I thought the physics were wonky on the uh, cage that's coming down. Why did I jump? And uh, I ended up spending, oh, good 20 minutes in this cave, where I should have maybe spent five. Uh, questionable, I know. But that was how I was thinking about the game at the time. Uh, really, this is the easiest cave we're going to come up against, uh, barring, I think, one other later on that I just breezed through in about two seconds. But as you can see... This is now lighter, it means I have time to climb up here before we start generating any downforce. And I can just make the jump. Very easy puzzle. I wasn't entirely sure how I was expected to get anywhere in this thing, uh, until I hit the survival instinct that showed me. This may have been built in honor of her priestesses. And this is our reward for completing every tomb coming up. So yes, every time you complete a tomb, you get a relic map. 
which shows you all the journals, GPS caches, and artifacts that are in the area. Let's sit down for a moment. We have plenty of salvage. God for us training. All those tracks, all those climbs. It's as if he'd been preparing me for something like this all along. It's clear that there are people living here, and they're organized. They're killing and recruiting. Why? It's like some kind of cult. But a cult of what? What do they want? What are they looking for? So, we just got another uh, journal update. And now we're in a spot that maybe isn't great. Uh, we've got to... I didn't explain this last time. But if you want to get some of these items that are locked up ahead, uh, here we are, for tier 2 for example, Climber's Agility, which we will definitely want, you have to unlock a certain number of skills that are already on here. Uh, I believe it's like 8 or something like that for the first uh, to get to tier 2, and then there's tier 3. Um, and that's actually pretty effective too. But right now we're just going to focus on what's going to keep us going uh, the fastest. And so, this will be very helpful. Ammo is no by, by no means scarce in this game, but it is good to have these things. I apparently missed Journal 2 completely, uh, which is odd because I never heard Journal 2. So, let's get out of this cave and on with the game. Slowly. Can't jump. I can't snuff the torch out. Yes, can't do that now. And Laura is looking at these rocks, which are not really giving us any updates. So eventually we will come back for all the stuff in here. Um, but right now we're going to keep moving on. Alright, fantastic. I don't need the torch anymore. And yes, once again, later on in the game we will be getting an item that will allow us to basically have infinite torches and not have to worry about uh, going back and getting fire for something else, which will make sections like this one a lot more tolerable. Oh shit. <laughs> so if you jump onto an area that is not craggy enough for you to latch onto, you get a situation like that. Alright, we're about to come into something. A new combat situation up ahead. Hey! You find anything? No. Nothing. What? Nothing. There's no one up here. They never make it up this far! Should we head back up to the bunker? Nah, let's wait out the storm. Got it! Stay alert! Let's move inside! Yeah, move inside this- Get thing. over here! Firing for uh, He must have seen me. But, as you can see, I effectively set that one guy on fire, and that is the exact kind of guy who needs to die first. That's the, uh, the flame- the flame guy, the uh, Molotov thrower. Once again, those guys should be your priority early on. And what's this here? I have spoken to some of the villagers on the island. I was expressly forbidden to leave the palace, but this did not stop me. My duties here are clear. I must learn the truth, but the stories I uncovered defy belief. Rumors abound of the Queen's communion with the spiritual world. They say she commands the sun and the rain, that her lands are abundant by her will alone. <laughs> this is certainly nonsense. What can be the cause of such whispers? Is this how she treats her people? By engaging with superstitions? I saw absolute reverence in their eyes when they spoke about I also sense fear. Her people are treated with fairness, taxed reasonably, and are well protected by her storm. But no wonder some of them even pray to her. It's as if she were more than just a queen to them. And through her people may well be a harder task than I imagined. Okay, so that's the first of the ancient scrolls. As you can see, there's plenty of stuff in this area. Um, but we'll come back for that. And there's some stuff that explains uh, exactly who these people are as well, in a little bit better detail than the game does itself. And I can't jump out of this water. Interesting. There we go. And let's just pick up some salvage. You can see, I have full arrows, so not a huge, uh, not a huge concern there. And latch onto this. If 
I had a uh, flame right now, I could set that on fire and, uh, you know, get that one challenge out of the way still. Uh, but I don't. Instead, we're going to come over here. Ah, here's some fire, actually. Perfect. And if you recall the first video where I mentioned that objects that are uh, kind of white are your clue of where you're supposed to go next, if you look at the craggy walls, those are all white. That or they're whitish, I should say. So that indicates you should be climbing on them, right? Hey, another GPS cache. Uh, or cache. People are going to get me on that one. I always pronounce it wrong. And let's just double jump our way out of here. Perfect. And salvage. Uh, later in the game, when it gets a bit more set PC and action-oriented, we will not be stopping to pick up salvage and such. Um, but there is... You need a considerable amount of salvage to upgrade your weapons to usable capacities by the end of the game. So I will be prioritizing salvage when it comes up. Uh, leap of faith. Axe out. Nice. I really do like when the game does that kind of thing. It looks nice. Ryan, did you find Sam? We're still on her trail. I'm going to try and send an SOS from an old radio tower up here. Any tips? Hey, Lara. You're gonna need to find the communications console. It'll look like a bunch of old switchboards. Okay. I'll let you know when I find it. Alright. You're basically forced into fighting in this section here. Come on, grab her! Please! You don't need to do this! And you can see there, uh, something I failed to mention in the past is that if Laura doesn't get a full pull on the bow, as in that circle doesn't go as small as it can go, uh, she will not be able to hit the enemy she's targeting as hard. And this guy is melee. Um, we do not want him anywhere near us right now. We don't have the capacity for a melee fight. There are things you get later on, uh, counter abilities and such, that will make it a lot easier to fight those guys, to the point where you could have five or six of them and make it kind of trivial to fight them. Uh, but right now, they are probably more dangerous than the fire guys if they get up close to us. But, looks like we're moving on. I have a bad feeling about this. Really? I'm telling you, Reyes, it's mechanical, not an electrical problem. Now, Alex. <coughs> this looks like it might be a, an electrical problem. You think? <coughs> oh, hello. Hey. Is this little fox, oh, huh? She's cute, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Alicia. Alicia. It's my like daughter. That. Oh. 14 years old. And smarter than you'll ever be. She must must get that from her father. Don't give him the attention. And yeah. I'll take a look at this. Probably electrical. From her father. Nice one. So I was on the walk, right? Doing a spot of midnight fishing. Hey, Grim. Time to button down the hatches. I'd be right with you. So I was on the walk, right? And this thing comes looming at me, looming out of the water it was. So I give it a old Glasgow kiss, you know. <laughs> Get shot of trouble nine times out of ten, that does. Took me a week to sleep that night off, and I've not touched a drop since. See you at dinner, Sam. <laughs> All right. Can we take B-roll, please? Thank you. Dr. James Whitman, filler 15, take three, and action. Okay, now take a firm grip, and then slice him down the belly, like this. Yeah, you got... Good Lord, cut! 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 
Is, is he coming back? <sighs> I'll go get him. World-renowned archaeologist. I discovered the world-renowned archaeologist, Mr. Dr. Dr. James Whitman. Of fish. It's just a fish. It's I fine. It's just They're going to be fine. This damned reality TV business. I'm, I'm meant to be bringing culture to the people, Sam, not dinner. Uh, no offense, Jonah. The audience demands content, Dr. Whitman. You know that. So until we find the Lost Kingdom, we need footage like this. Come on, let's just take it from the top, okay? We're gonna make you look like Gordon Ramsay in editing. Dr. James Whitman, filler 15, take four, action. Okay, now take a firm grip, and then slice them down the belly, like that. I've studied them so much, I can see charts on the back of my eyelids. But if I'm not right about Yamatai being in the Dragon's Triangle... I remember when you found that one, your father's digs. You ran up and showed it to me dressed in your penguin pajamas. <laughs> I was five <laughs> years old, it was my first find. Yeah. You've got great instincts, girl. You just have to trust them. Mm, that's what my father used to say. Now, there was a man that ran on instinct. For better or worse. He would have been so proud of you, Lara. We're getting closer to the storm. Well, whatever's coming, we'll get through it, eh? <laughs> Okay, Lara, pull yourself together. Thank you everyone for watching.